You need a VIP in your life. Hey loves, it's your favorite blind chick back on your screen with another one. This video is inspired by one of my favorite books. I read it years ago. It's called The Five People You Meet in Heaven. It's a beautiful short story, so if you got time, check it out. It's a quick read about a man who doesn't realize the impact he's had on many people as he goes through heaven. And it's just a beautiful story. I don't want to say anything else to give it away. You should definitely read it. But I wanted to do a spin on it in this video where I'm going to share with you the five people you meet in blindness. These are people that have inspired, influenced, and impacted me over the last 11 years of living with Stardust disease. I Sometimes looking back, I can't believe how far I've come and how long I have to go. But in a way, there's really beauty in the struggle. So I hope that this video helps you. It's a continuation of last week's video. So after you watch this, you can definitely click the link in the information box or pause and click up here to see the 15 people you need. I purposely chose people who don't have an eye disease in that video because I knew I wanted to make this one. And if you like this one, like I said in the last one, let a girl know and I'll do a family edition next because it's true what they say. It definitely takes a village to raise a child, even if that child's fully grown with Stargust disease. <laughs> the first person, it feels fitting to make an optometrist since for many of us, that's gonna be our first experience with this eye disease. If it wasn't for the optometrist, the specialist that I met the first year, I don't know who I'd be. They're the ones who diagnosed me, that helped me in the initial stages that still help me today. And if I had to narrow it down to one person, it'd be Dr. Jurisic. Dr. Eon is really up there too, cause she's amazing. Someone who just sees behind the patient doctor relationship and she sees you as a person. But for sake of time, I'm gonna focus on Dr. Jurisic. I think because I've known her since year one until now, we met at the end of 2010. I had been officially diagnosed at the top of the year. And I think she was the sixth or seventh specialist I saw. Before her, I didn't really feel comfortable, to be honest, even after being in her office, I wasn't fully accepting of my diagnosis. But what I will say is that she treated me as a whole person. She asked me how I was doing. She took time to have a conversation in between telling me to look at her ear, now look at the light, now read the sign. It wasn't just a in and out like I had many times before. It felt different. The energy was just different. Over the last more than a decade, she's been this person that I can email throughout the year with questions. She's the one that helped me create the youth group, gave me the first OG e-site eyewear to demo before the one I showed you on this channel. She's even helped mold my channel. She tried to help me figure out ways to make my nutrition degree work for me. And for a bit, I was doing the ABCs of nutrition, if you remember that. She's just kind of been not just a presence in my life legally blind, but my life in general. She's really helped me see beyond my vision loss. We've had conversations about manifestation, how to cure yourself with food and with mindset how important it is not to stress yourself out, how to also speak on what you're feeling, and how important it is for me as a person to share my story through platforms like these. Honestly, without Dr. Jurisic and one other person, I don't even think this channel would have became what it did. So you guys, for all of you who say thank you to me for sharing my story, she's one of the people behind me even having the confidence to sit here and talk to you about stuff like this. The second person you meet will hopefully be someone who's visually impaired. You need a VIP in your life. And for this part of the story, I'm gonna choose Jessica. Hey girl, if you're watching, she's someone I met, I wanna say six or seven years ago. And we don't talk often. I see her on the gram though, she's doing her thing. What I love about Jessica as a person is she's taking her disease and she's making it work for her. She's entering a space that normally wouldn't have been occupied by someone with vision loss and carving a space, not just for her, but for generations to come. I think by now she's actually completed her PhD in arts and accessibility. So when I last spoke to her about this, what she was doing was research to see how to make such a visual art form, something that could be enjoyed by people who lack the visual and be able to perform and engage and just feel part of something. She's all about knocking down doors and making space for us where there wasn't before. And I just find beauty in that. You need that person who has a disease and is not letting it hinder them. 
she inspires me in so many ways because anytime I check up on her, she checks in on me. We're on that same wavelength of knowing that our life is not just our lives, it's a legacy for the next phase of Legally Blind People. The third person you'll meet in Sight Loss will be another VIP, very similar but different, is Amy. And I love Amy for so many reasons. For me, she's one of the most warm, serrated people I've ever met. And I've met a lot of people. But with her, it's just, you can literally tell there's a heart of gold in there. She has a disease that hasn't been discovered yet. Like there's no diagnosis, but she's legally blind. And in some ways she sees similar to people who have Stargardt's disease sees. What I love about having a friend like Amy is we can talk as if we're not visually impaired. And then when we touch on the topic, it doesn't feel touchy. We definitely don't feel like there's time that passes in between our conversations or FaceTimes. Anytime I would meet her pre-panorama, it was just like meeting an old friend. And I think I met Amy around the same time as Jessica, but again, because life gets busy and she works like very demanding, but she's very passionate about her jobs. Sometimes it's hard to get, you know, schedules to work out, you know, me with the YouTube life and I had two jobs pre-panorama, but she always makes the time. What's beautiful about having a friend like Amy is you can say something, you don't have to explain it. Unlike with my friends who aren't VIPs, there's things that I can say to Amy and she just gets it. This weekend, if you've seen the vlogs, you know, but I heard a slight beep sound. I called the super, he came, he's like, do you hear it? I'm like, of course it wouldn't make a sound when you're here. As soon as he left, it started beeping again. Turns out the battery need to be changed in the unit next to mine. No one else can hear it but me. And these are things that I think only visually impaired people will be like, yeah, that happens to me. Amy shared stories with me about times she's heard things and her partner's like, no, I don't. But then she can hear it very clearly. Do I think our senses are heightened? Not so much. I think we just have to pay attention more, but that's another story for another day. But it's little things like that that I can talk to her about or even what it's like to work in a place, like a workplace, and people not understand because she works in an industry where she's helping to do fundraising, but most of the people she works with aren't disabled the way she is. She's done a lot of things outside of work to engage the public and be an advocate and help with accessibility. She's actually got me to speak on panels about what it's like to be legally blind and it was such an amazing time. You need someone like that that's gonna help you adjust to things when you're not ready to accept them. That's definitely what she is to me because not everyone you meet in heaven is an angel. The fourth person in vision loss you might meet Maybe this person who won't be named because I ain't trying to throw shade like that, but I still want to say this piece because I think it's very important. I mentioned this in videos before that the people that have been most critical on my blind journey have also been other blind people. I guess we just don't see eye to eye. With this person in particular, I met them years ago and we were at a conference. It's called Vision Quest. This is something that would happen annually here and it was a great meeting of minds where you could hear from researchers and other visually impaired people and specialists. Optometrists would be there as well. There'd be people selling products and merchandise and assistive devices and you could meet other visually impaired people and just feel like you're part of a community. Well here, this particular year, which I think was Visions 15 or 16, I met this person and we all shared our story their story warmed my heart. I was just like, wow, they overcame this when they told me what was happening. And as I was thinking, I was like, wow, I thought I had a hard time being legally blind, but this is next level. It's really true what they say. Whenever you think you have it bad, there's someone who has it worse and they're making it work. So I was very inspired. And after hearing this person speak, we all decided at the end of the conference, we're gonna do one thing and check back in a year that's gonna impact and empower the community. She said her piece, I said mine, and I was like, hey, I've been doing this thing for a really long time, so if you need any help, let a girl know. I've been in the industry for years, and you know, if you wanna help out with the blind community, then I'm down for it. Um, no, and I was just like, oh, okay. 
I mean, it's no crime to decline someone's offer. I did bring it up to a few other visually impaired people that knew her and they're like, yeah, she's like that. So I'm like, okay, I can't take her personal. Fast forward as life and luck would happen, our paths crossed again. This time we were working amongst a whole bunch of other visually impaired people. And at one point she turned to me and said, Hey Alicia, it sounds like you're at the beginning stages of your blindness journey. When are you thinking of getting a dog and a cane? And I was just confused because the way I see it, there is no beginning or end. Whether you're diagnosed yesterday or diagnosed 10 years ago, we're all gonna have different stages and phases. There's an ebb and flow. I might be okay today, but I might not have been okay yesterday with my diagnosis and vice versa, right? So I just basically explained that to her. She's like, yeah, but you know, you should really consider getting a dog and a cane. And I've had other visually impaired people put that on me. And personally for me, because those things don't help me, I almost feel like it's a injustice to other visually impaired people like me. If I were to just get a dog and a cane for the sake of having it instead of needing it, then what about all the people that are like me that realize that that doesn't help me? I can navigate the city perfectly. I can take a picture of a street sign and zoom in. I can hear what to cross the street. But what I need is an ability to see the screen, things to help me still function and work. Like I, I've always said it before, losing my vision hasn't been the worst thing that happened to me. So with that said, I know that life can deal you a hard deck of cards. And because of that, I don't have the same luxuries as the people who tell me to just live at home or to go on SSI. We don't even have that here in Canada or to get a dog and a cane. These are not options that are feasible for me. If they were, I would reconsider, but they aren't. And as a person who has a platform, I think it's a disservice to say, okay, because everyone thinks a blind person is someone with a dog or a cane, then I'm gonna get that too, because that's not my blind experience. And I need to speak to that so that other people feel comfortable speaking to theirs. So I said all of this eloquently, and it kind of just whoop, <laughs> over the head. And I was just like, okay. But I say that all to say that you will meet people along the way. She wasn't the first and she hasn't been the last to push their understanding of blindness on me. I've had people who have 20-20 vision that do it and I give them a pass because they don't know. Like if you didn't know me or you didn't know someone who had an eye disease, you might not know that it's expressed in so many ways because all you see on the TV and the big screen are the dark glasses, the cane, the dog, not being well kept, not caring about fashion, not doing your face, you know? But there's a whole world out there, there's a whole spectrum. Just because I can set up the camera doesn't mean I can see it when it's on. It's just a very interesting in-between. I'm in limbo pretty much. And in that way, I have to honor where I'm at. I can't just do whatever people think is what blindness is and needs because that's not gonna work for me or anyone that comes after me. The fifth and final person you'll meet in vision loss is hopefully someone that is like Brian and Brad. I know, I cheat coded the last one, but they're two for one because they're two blind brothers. I met them via Zoom, I wanna say three years ago. I had heard about them a year before because I think it would have been 2016. My friend sent me a message and it was a link to the Ellen show. They were featured on talking about why their fabrics were so soft and had braille on the side. They were basically creating this clothing line to raise awareness and funds for our disease. And I was just like, wow, that's so empowering to me. I was in a very dark in-between place with my prognosis and life in general, if I keep it real. So seeing that video gave me hope. I just felt so inspired to keep going with my YouTube channel and Eventually, I don't even know how, but their people reached out to me. They actually took the time to have a conversation with me, which most companies don't do. Like they'll just have their person reach out to me and then the product will be sent. But they took like a good 30, 45 minutes to talk to me. And one thing I will always remember is that Brad asked me, how are you managing? I can't imagine what it's like to be diagnosed at 21. And I was just astounded. I'm over here thinking, I can't imagine what it's like to be diagnosed at seven. And I told him that. And he said, at least he had that extra time to adjust and adapt and accept. But based on the story I saw on your channel, you just had this shock, like a culture shock at 21. I'm like, yeah, that's true. I never saw it that way. And what was most beautiful about this experience to me is that two visually impaired people could see the other side. I could see 
where his beauty and the struggle was and he could see mine. We weren't there to judge or diminish or say, oh, you haven't experienced this yet or oh, you're not blind enough yet. But there's this commonality of understanding and wanting to uplift one another. There wasn't this feeling of I know better or you're not quite there yet. It was just this is what it is. And of course, we discussed other things. And I'll always hold that conversation very dear to my heart, just like the clothes they sent me. It's just it's experiences like these that really show you that even though you can have a difficult journey, if you seek it out, you will meet some amazing souls along the way. So those are my five. You know me, I'm really bad. I want to add a sixth person, but I'm not going to do that. So let a girl know if you like this video. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like button, share and subscribe too. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.